Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this discussion. My name is Swaha Pashnaik. I'm the Global Economics Editor of Reuters Breaking Views. With me, it's a pleasure today to welcome Matthew Boyce. We are, have a pretty all-encompassing topic to discuss today, governing a world out of balance. Matthew, or Matt, is ideally suited to talk us through some of these big issues. He's Deputy Assistant Secretary at the US State Department and is responsible for seeing policy towards nearly a dozen European countries, including Poland, Austria and Switzerland. A career member of the Senior Foreign Service, he has served in Canada, had assignments in Germany and overseas tours in Afghanistan, India, Poland, Russia, Bangladesh and the United Kingdom. Matt, welcome and thank you for joining us. Well, thank you very much, Swaha, and I'm very happy to be here with you. Uh, and I'd like to thank uh, Frank and uh, Harassus for, for organizing this event. Um, so, um, yes, um, uh, the subject of your uh, of, of, the, of the topic of, of, of your of your uh, this uh, plenary uh, today is is uh, is a world out of balance. So, um, and it really is unprecedented in the way uh, the global pandemic has. Uh, has upended the world that, uh, that we took for granted just uh, a little, just uh, just at the beginning of this year. In fact, um, it's um, it's it's uh, it's it's painfully uh, it's introduced a great change in how we look at this world, and uh, and other factors, of course, have also uh, contributed to this you know, world out of balance. Um, uh, even though uh, not all the governing remedies of off being offered are able to to restore that balance. Um, We've, um, we have, of course, multilateralism and globalism are, uh, are not ends in themselves. Um, they're means to achieve an end, uh, better lives for our peoples and, our, uh, and, and, and all peoples for that matter. Um, the, uh, the lack of confidence that, uh, that we're seeing in multilateralism and globalism is in, uh, in no small measure due to the failure, uh, their failure to deliver what they promised, um, uh, at least in an inclusive sense. We, of course, yesterday we had the, the end of the of UN General Assembly, and it sort of reminded uh, reminded us of uh, as I was listening to the comments of all of the of the heads of state um, uh, in my uh, small part of the world, the, the area that I cover, I was struck by some of those very same themes of the the, 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 the sort of the, the lack of of, uh, of of confidence in some of these multilateral institutions to deal with the problems that we're facing today. Um, and it was uh, it was really quite quite uh, quite striking. Um, uh, it, um, I mean, whether it starts in, um, I mean, we the United States, of course, uh, um, have, we're have been you know, we're, we're founders of the multilateral of, of the liberal international order after World War II, and um, and uh, and are, are are totally engaged in that right now. Um, but we also um, have uh, have noticed uh, uh, sort of. Uh, uh, a decline in some of the effectiveness of, of some of these uh, of these multilateral institutions that have have helped guide us through these ch challenging periods in the, in the past. Um, I mean, we um, have you know have have great confidence in, uh, in in multilaterals in some respects, but in other respects, we're seeing uh, a weakening of them, and we really like to. Um, We'd like to uh, sort of basically uh, see them uh, live up to their potential, and of course, we also uh, uh, often um, uh, provide suggestions or uh, sometimes criticism in terms of how some of these institutions that have helped guide us through crises like this uh, in the past have uh, uh, can be over overcome. I mean, whether they be in the UN system generally or um, or um, um, uh, you know, other institutions like the OECD, uh, uh, the, I mean, the OPCW, I mean, I, I just go through, uh, you know, institution by institution, each of which have their own uh, sort of issues, their own difficulties. Um, but they, 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 they've helped us through the past, uh, but they're, but they're, we're seeing a lot of um, weak weaknesses there and, and COVID-19 is, is, uh, is, is exacerbating them. Um, but anyway, while we have, uh, while, the, while the the pandemic has really introduced a a great change into how we look at the world, um, other factors have also helped, uh, have contributed to that. Um, and um, we 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 really um, we, we need at this point to um, to, uh, to to as friends and partners uh, talk frankly about how the world has changed uh, uh, and and what the post-COVID world will look like. 
um, the pre-COVID uh, uh, geopolitical uh, division of the world has has continued despite um, the uh, COVID-19. Uh, we have uh, unfortunately ge- geopolitical, geopolitical rivals uh, trying to um, exploit the pandemic to shirk their responsibility and to expand their influence. Um, so mistrust, I'm afraid, and um, and promote disinformation. Um, and um, our, our geopolitical rivals are um, seeking to um, to do this uh, using um, asymmetrical means to exploit this uh, this opportunity that they see. Uh, we have uh, this provides something of a test uh, test environment in case really a, a test case uh, where um, even though, for example, the the, uh, the the pandemic originated in in, in communist China. We're seeing um, the uh, Communist Party of China attempting to change the narrative um, and uh, about its uh, about its um, responsibility uh, for for uh, wreaking havoc on so many of our economies and societies. Um, so maybe I should just stop there. Uh, the world has dramatically changed in many ways, but in many ways it remains the same. Uh, we um, continue to pursue a diplomacy amidst this new normal. Uh, but we still need to know um, uh, who, who our allies and friends and partners are in this, um, in, in g- getting through this period. And, and we also need to know who our rivals are and what their agendas are, uh, because not everybody sees this uh, as, uh, as this, in, this, in the same way. Uh, we, uh, we need to work with our friends and uh, to, to, to ensure that this global system that has helped us through these uh, difficulties in the past, that, uh, that, it, that it, uh, it, it remains um, uh, able to do so in the future ensuring um, accountability and respecting national sovereignty and uh, and protecting global safety and fighting back against those rivals that uh, that want to dismantle or weaken that international system. Well, thank you, Matt, um, for the <laughs> statement. Let me drill into some of the things. You, you have a lot in there. So um, let me drill into a couple of the issues that you've raised in there, which was about global superpowers and the rivalry and uh, working with friends. I guess one of the things that um, people who thought they were friends of America might say, say with the trade wars and the tariffs that have been imposed on people who would consider themselves allies like Canada or the European Union, um, these waters have got a little bit muddied. How Were there other different ways to reform perhaps the institutions, the post Bretton Woods institutions that you're talking about without necessarily making allies quite so confused about how close they are as allies. Right. Well, um, I, I, I don't deal with trade issues and in, uh, in, in, every day, so I, I must I, I have to sort of um, keep my marks, remarks rather general with my, uh, in that respect. Sure. I mean, we do we, these, these international uh, agreements, like, for example, the WTO, uh, as you're, we're talking about trade. I mean, these, these are these are uh, these have have, have um, are, are there to resolve uh, these uh, thorny issues that have been with us for a long time. But we found them to be not up to the task, and um, um, we have uh, challenges from to, to uh, for, uh, trade challenges uh, from coming from uh, many different directions. And this this institution has has been uh, unable to hasn't been uh, up to the task. And so uh, we've we found it um, necessary um, uh, to 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 um, to, to uh, approach these trade issues on a more bilateral basis uh, because of the difficulties of achieving more uh, a broader uh, international uh, uh, consensus on on some of these uh, thorny issues. The same thing applies to the WT, WHO. We've seen it uh, in, in the, during this pandemic. The same thing applies to the OECD. We've seen the same issue. Uh, you know, an institution is very important. But that that is that is over time not proven itself to be up to the task of dealing with the issues that it's supposed to deal with. We've seen it with the with the OEC, with the OPCW, uh, the the the, uh, the poisoning of uh, Alexei Navalny. I mean, you know, we've we've seen it with um, oh gosh, I mean, we've seen it with the JCPOA. I mean, it's not an international institution, but it's a, a framework. Um, it's proven itself to be. Um, uh, flawed, and um, and so we've had and we've raised our hand in a crowded room, and we said, "Excuse me, this is flawed," and people are then upset with us. Um, so uh, we we've you know, and the same of course, approved, you know, the UN Human Rights Commission, same thing, you know, institution, a very important institution, but uh, when you know, but um, many of whose members are are uh, some of the uh, of the most uh, egregious human rights violators in the world. And so, I mean, we, we so we see these institutions, and and they're they're 
they they have potential. They 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 can work, but we uh, they're not working properly. And so we have raised our hand and said, "Excuse me, this is not working." And then, of course, um, uh, uh, we, we have people think we don't support the multilateral system when we do. It's just that we have to we have to these institutions need reform. And um, and so so whether it be trade or whether it be you know health uh, in, in the in the case of the WHO whether it be uh, tr- uh, arms control agreements same thing we've had a big problem with Russia um, violating uh, its agreements in the in the past and so uh, this is not for a lack of interest in these if these frameworks these institutions it's it's for uh, it's it's a desire to, for them to work properly and effectively and transparently and and, and this sort of thing and and this is this is our message. Um, and of course, then when we do so, uh, sometimes people say, well, you don't support the international system. When of course we do. We're an integral part of it. We support it incredibly uh, uh, broadly, uh, but we also have big problems with it. And, and, we, and, we, and we make our views known. I think an international system without the U.S. sort of even whether it wants to be in it or not wouldn't work at this uh, current uh, sort of juncture anyway. Um, let me ask you to, to continue with your metaphor about raising your hand in a crowded room and making the point that this is not working as well. I mean, if you extrapolate, sometimes the, the potential is that the U.S. wants to leave the room altogether because it doesn't think it can change things. I mean, for a superpower and for somebody who has been, as you pointed out, architect, uh, co-architect of the post Bretton Woods financial institutions, liberal order, that's quite a change for others to come to grips with, to say this, actually, they, they could leave the room, in fact, not just put their hands up and point out some uncomfortable truths. Uh, yes, this is uh, an issue. Um, we um, we have done this in the past under previous administrations too for various periods of time with particularly difficult uh, uh, um, UNESCO, for example, I'm reminded by I'm uh, UNHRC again, uh, and then we've we've then um, um, uh, waited for them to to uh, to re- return to the to to, what, to their original purposes, and then we've rejoined. Um, so um, again, I'm I'm not a specialist in international organizations. I I'm, I apologize. I, I deal with, uh, I with uh, you know a, 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 a relatively small part of the world. But these these issues are important that you raise, and but and, but our our responses also should be properly understood, so that um, so that people uh, don't mis- don't m- willfully misrepresent our approach. And, and don't read into 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 our uh, activities or our our, our, our opinion our our, our, our statements uh, uh, an approach that's not there. We uh, we are um, so this, this is a, a pretty key point uh, is, is to is to properly understand this and to and to make sure that these institutions um, work properly uh, and, um, and and that's been our, our theme our, our our mantra really uh, for a long time. Let me turn to something else that you mentioned in your opening sort of remarks, which was about the need to sort of make sure people are benefiting, your individual citizens of the, that you are serving effectively as a government uh, public servant. Um, inequality has grown within some of the richest countries in the world in the past decades, even as it's declined between countries. I mean, what do you think the coming years bring on this? And, you know, do you think the COVID-19 will lead to a turning inwards and making sure that one's own citizens are experiencing a more equal opportunity, more equal prospects, rather than sort of turning outwards with the global trade agenda that we've seen for the last couple of decades? Um, yeah, well, here again, this is uh, sounds like my graduate school seminar questions you're asking me. I, I, I'm, I here again, I deal with uh, very practical bilateral relationships with with uh, a, a slight section of Europe. So, I mean, I, I mean, I, I whether you, I'm not sure you want my opinion on this, but uh, definitely, absolutely, I think you've been all through it. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, there there is a, of course a tendency, a certain tendency to um, to turn inward during times of crisis. But um, but of course we are live, we, we are such an open society. We are such a, a integrated into the world. We are so, we're such an, a critical element of that of that of of, of, of the international system that uh, it it can't. It's difficult to imagine that this would, would last uh, very long. Even though this is a, a tendency in the part of many countries to to um, to deal with its own problems first. Um, 
before uh, we, we are so inextricably linked with everybody else uh, that uh, it, it's, it would be hard to imagine this would continue uh, for, ver- for ver- you know uh, uh, sort of indefinitely. I mean, it, it's just it just it, 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 the, the world abhors a, a, a vacuum like that. We you know we we, we are we are engaged in and in fact even for those of our for those critics who uh, who 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 uh, who, uh, who uh, allege that we're doing that now. Uh, we are so engaged in the world that, um, that, that you know, sort of, it's, 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 it, as I see every day, how we are engaged in the world every day. It is, it is just difficult to, to, uh, to, 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 to overestimate uh, uh, that because uh, even, even during a time when we're also consumed with some of our own, our, our own uh, problems. Absolutely, and I think if one thing is uh, going to make people feel more interconnected, it's global pandemic where vaccines for one will not solve the problems for all. So if we don't all have them, the problem continues. And as you say, the uh, interconnectedness is very... Um, our time is nearly up, unfortunately, Matt. It's a really oh, interesting no. conversation. But let me ask you um, perhaps one last question. What Do you think there's anything that the pandemic might help change for the better in the long something like less travel, which might reduce climate change risks? Or is there anything that you see that can come out of this that actually benefits in the long run, despite the huge, horrific... Uh, well, I mean, I think that, um, that um, you know... I mean, there, there's the there's the there's the uh, kind of official answer, and that of course is that you know however much we've you know things have changed, they've all, there's so much that has remained the same, um, and um, I mean you know we have. Uh, we have to, you know, we continue uh, as we have in, in diplomacy and in, in this new normal. But we also, we also know, know who our friends and allies are, and who's, who our rivals are, and that we need to work with our friends and, and our partners and our allies to keep to ensure that this global system is uh, continues to be accountable and transparent and effective. But um, that it respects national sovereignty and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, you know, on a personal level, of course, I mean, we we have uh, I, how many people do you know who've who've actually um, 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 uh, positively commented on the fact that they spend more time with their families. They have, uh, they are, uh, <coughs> excuse me, they have um, somehow or other, they've enjoyed, uh, they, they've taken up things that they wouldn't have otherwise done. They've, um, they've, they've had a higher quality of life because they're not commuting. I mean, you know, you just, you can just imagine they're, they're, they're sort of, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, um, they're, 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 they're more active. They're, they're, you know, engaging in sports and exercise more. I mean, they're just, the list goes on and on. And, and of course, uh, this, it, it does have uh, that, that aspect to it, but, um, but um, it, this, this is, this is it's taking a, a major toll, as you know, our, on our societies with, uh, I mean, unemployment, uh, uncertainty um, and, and and some of the isolation that also comes with it, and this is uh, something that we are um, also all of our societies are grappling with. Um, uh, how, you know, it would be so much more appealing to have be having this conversation in person, but we're having it on <laughs> electronically, which is uh, and and how 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 much we enjoy. Uh, what used to be a commonplace everyday event, which means seeing people in person and 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 going to a conference where there as a, a real conference where you're in a room with lots of other people, you know, a lot of you know, not, not everybody's been doing this, uh, and 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 so this 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 is uh, something that uh, that is that is a, a you know we're having to having to uh, having to grapple with. No, absolutely, and uh, yeah, I'm sure that will resonate with a lot of our audience who. You know, behind the scenes networking, the informal chats that lead to new friends being made. But um, to be honest, with discussions like this one, at least we're still getting a very rich exchange of ideas and thoughts and people's experiences, as with the rest of the Harasis uh, conference. So let me, my time's nearly up, let me thank you, Matt, and your team for uh, joining us and making this possible. Um, Frank, who and his team who organized all of this and most of all to all of you for taking the time out of your day to join us for this panel on governing the global order how to govern the global order and put it more into balance thank you all very much well thank you so and i, I i'm I, this went so by so quickly i wish we had longer to talk this absolutely is... <laughs> thanks man all right nice to see you ciao